Hi, I'm Miss Mayor. And I'm Miss Andrea. And today we're going to continue our discussion about college applications. Right. right. Today we're going to talk about that personal statement letter we mentioned previously. Right. And so the personal statement is necessary because that's going to go into the college application letter. Um, yes, there are other things you can write about, but essentially they really all are personal statements. And so let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. Plus to get it right, you need to write it a few times. So let's go ahead and start there. So, and so the first thing that needs to go into that personal statement is who are you? So the reason that we're doing mm -hmm. a personal statement mm -hmm. essay to begin with is every college application is going to have essay questions. And every one of those essay questions, the key thing to know about them is that the college wants to get to know the applicant. Right. They are evaluating applications that they see come in mm -hmm. based on the information that you're being given. The reason that we want to talk about who we are mm -hmm. is because the college is looking to get to know the applicant. Right. And so how do we tell people who we are? It's so usually like, hi, my name is, this is how old I am. This is what I like to do. And this is maybe how big my family is and how that kind of lets people know who you are in the world. And that's great. And I would go ahead and write that down right. because some of that may end up being irrelevant, but who are you really? So I like kids to sit down and think of an experience some camp they did, some hard thing that happened a couple of years ago. A lot of kids wrote about their COVID experience or losing a loved one, or there's a temptation to go dark if it affected you deeply and you grew out of it, fine. Right. But don't go straight for the tears. So anything that you've experienced, whether it brought you joy, whether it gave you pause, whether you accomplished something that you didn't think you could ever accomplish, so anything character building? Tell us that story. Because again, the point of using a story is not just to provide generic backstory. Mm -hmm. It's to talk about how you have grown and developed as a, a person. Right. How, and so how this you... requires some self-reflection. Yes. yes. And so some examples on young lady who I got into aeronautical college. When she was 11, she was bused in her city and to school and it's a poor city had a limited number of bus stops and her path to the bus stop was on the side of the road with no sidewalk she and her aunt started a petition and went door to door and got everyone to sign it to petition to either move the bus stop or put in sidewalks now they did this all they presented it they got patted on the back for doing that. They did not get sidewalks, so the bus got moved. <laughs> um, but she wrote about that story and how it showed her what she was capable of, even when she didn't get what she wanted, that she still grew from it. So that's right. one example of that kind of story you could have. Um, a lot of my students talked about one girl who I just dealt with a little bit. She was a public school student. These are all public school students, actually. I do work with public school students on this. It was 2021. And her father got really ill and her high school fell off. And so her story explains what happened to her grades. That's fair. She was like, we were doing okay. And my father got sick and he got really, really sick. And he's in the home bedridden. We're sitting with him. And so grades absolutely suffered. Right. Um, but this year, now that we've got comfortable with the situation, that is where dad is and that's where dad's going to be. Right. Um, now that we've all gotten comfortable with it, I've managed to pull my grades back up. Instead of just sitting with him, I'm sitting with him with a book in my lap. Right. And things of that. And so she showed how she grew character and rallied back and, and took back her education, even though she lost it for a really good reason. Right. And so it's a negative, but you see the point in that is that something happened. How did I react? Right. And how did I grow from that? So when we say, who are you? You want to know who you really are, how you are when you're pressed, how you are when things are difficult, or how you might get a wild hair and say, I'm going to do this. And I'm just a kid. But I'm going to do this and push through. And so that's kind of a key thing is you have not sat down and done some real soul searching and self-reflection. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who you are, 
this is going to be a difficult thing to write Mm -hmm. because it's very hard to tell somebody else who you want to be, especially if you don't know. So take some time before starting to actually write the essay to kind of get to know who you are on a a deeper level. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about style for a minute. Once you've gotten your story out on paper and you may write three or four of your stories and guys trust your relatives Wrap your stories around to your relatives and figure, watch them and see which one makes them go. Which one of them goes, this is who you are. I believe this. Or if you have other trusted adults in your circle. Yeah, you'll have that relationship with not somebody. not as valuable to shop it around to your peers. No, because your peers will make you feel insecure about right. your differences. But also they may not have the experience to be able to fully grasp what needs to happen Mm -hmm. with this essay. Mm -hmm. So find some trusted adults, more than one. And so once you've settled on and said, this is my story, Um, this is what I'm going with. Now you need to look at who influences you and not your mom or your dad. You need to look into the world to see who you were influenced by. Poets, philosophers, musicians and look for quotes that they've made that you can relate to that kind of um, help bring out your story. This inspirational quote can go at the beginning of your essay to set it up. The aeronautical girl started with an Oprah quote. She opened the essay with mm-hmm. a quote from Oprah. Um, I've had other people close an essay with a quote from somebody. Sometimes you'll see both. Right. And, and at the beginning and then remind you at the end. Beginning at the end, repeating it is good especially if you repeat it in a way that segues into why that school is good for you. Right. So you're going to have your story. You're going to frame that and tell that story in a way that's true and that's authentic to you. And then you're going to want to tailor every one. If it's not in the common application, right? You can't really tailor it in the common application. No, in the common app, you can go in and put a different essay in each school. Unless you're doing it. state schools, the state schools might just be one app. But I've gone in and put a different essay in each school with students. So do make sure that you're tailoring it to the school that you're sending it to. Mm-hmm. And in the previous video, we likened this to a cover letter when you're doing a job search. You want to have done some research about the school that you're going to. You want to be able to explain to somebody why that's the school you want to go to. And use your essay to tell them why you think that's the best fit for you. Starting with the inspirational quote and ending with and so when you get to here's my story here's how i've grown and then you look at the school and say this school's motto or this school values this and that's why this school is great for me right and so now you've not only told them who you are what helped form the way you view the world but how that college also fits into that for you and why they are your first choice look they may be your third choice but they're your first choice today in, in the essay, they get first choice. And make Absolutely. sure that it all ties together. This isn't a checklist that you're going to hit, well, I did that thing. They all need to flow. There needs to be that common thread that runs through the entire work. I'm going to do something. This is from College Vine. If you want to go on College Vine and read essays before you write yours, that would be great. Being Bangladeshi American, life was good. Verdant forest, sumptuous curries, and a devoted family. Then... My family abandoned our comfortable life in Bangladesh for a chance at the American dream in Los Angeles. Within our first year, my father was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. He lost his battle three weeks before my sixth birthday. Facing a new country without the steady presence of my father, we were vulnerable. Prisoners of hardship in the land of the free. We resettled in the Bronx in my uncle's renovated basement. It was meant to be our refuge, but I felt more displaced than ever. Gone were the high-rise condos of West L.A. Instead, government projects towered over the neighborhood. Pedestrians no longer smiled and greeted me. The atmosphere was hostile, even toxic. School kids were quick to pick on those they saw as weak or foreign, hurling harsh words I'd never heard before. Meanwhile, my family began integrating into the local Bangladeshi community. I struggled to understand those who shared my heritage, Bangladeshi mothers stayed home while fathers drove cabs and sold fruit by the roadside. Painful painful societal positions. Riding on crosstown buses or walking home from school, I began to internalize these disparities. During my fleeting encounters with affluent Upper East Siders, I saw kids of my age with nannies, 
parents who wore suits to work, and luxurious apartments with spectacular views. Those took cabs to their destinations, cabs that Bangladeshis drove. I watched the mundane moments of their lives with longing, aching to plant myself in their shoes. Shame pricked down my spine. I distanced myself from my heritage, rejecting the traditional Punjabis worn on Eid and refusing the Takari we ate for dinner every day. I grappled with my relationship with the Bangladeshi community. I turned my attention to helping my Bronx community by pursuing an internship with Assemblyman Louis Sepulveda. I handled desk work and took calls, spending the bulk of my time actively listening to the hardships constituents face. Everything from a veteran stripped of his benefits to a grandmother unable to support her bedridden grandchild. I never exposed myself to stories like these, and now I was the first to hear them. As an intern, I could only assist in what felt like the small ways, pointing out local job offerings, printing information on free ESL classes, reaching out to nonprofits. But to a community facing the onslaught of intense struggles, I realized that something as small as these actions would have vast impacts. Seeing the immediate consequences of my actions inspired me. Throughout that summer, I internalized my community's daily challenges in a new light. I began to stop seeing the prevalent underemployment and cramped living conditions less as sources of shame. Instead, I saw them as realities that had to be acknowledged, but could ultimately be remedied. I also realized the benefits of the Bangladeshi culture I was so ashamed of. My Bangla language skills were an asset to the office. My understanding of Bangladeshi etiquette allowed for a smooth communication between office staff and constituents. As I helped my neighbors navigate city services, I saw my heritage with pride, a perspective I never expected to have. Now I appreciate the value of my unique culture and background and living with less. This perspective offers room for progress, community integration, and a future worth fighting for. My time with Assemblyman Sepulveda's office taught me that I can be a change agent in enabling this progression. Far from being ashamed of my community, I some want to someday return to local politics in the Bronx to continue helping others access the American dream. I hope to help my community appreciate the opportunity to make progress together. By embracing reality, I learned to live in. Along the way, I discovered one thing, life is good, but we can make it better. I did not expect that to be that long. That was super long. I don't have to be a thousand me. words, 500 words. We'll do it. If you're a good wordsmith. It's not how long the essay is. Like if I remember correctly, it's probably 500 to 1200 words. And this was on the longer side. Right. Yes. And so you see here, you started off with a beautiful statement and then punched her in the face, which gears and, and told you how her worldview was affected very negatively by losing her father, right. by being forced to live in a basement, by being surrounded by rich kids when she was not. Right. And then, fortunately for her, she found her way into this politician's office, this assemblyman's office. An internship. And, and it, into an internship. And it changed her worldview. And that's how you tell a college who you are. Yeah. So I'm going to link you to this page and I'm probably a couple more. Don't copy exactly what you're reading out there. Yeah. Read for inspiration. But the there's, most, a lot, there's a lot of my dad died in here. Yeah, the <laughs> most important thing mm -hmm. about this project, about this essay, about what you're going to be doing, mm -hmm. is make sure that you're authentic in it. Yeah. The day, that's what the colleges are looking for. Yeah. Even if you don't have some you know, story like that, find something that is unique to you mm -hmm. and that is truly authentic to you. These people read dozens upon dozens of essays. I've seen kids who should have gotten to the college not because they didn't take the essay seriously. Not in the homeschool world because I make sure they do it right. right. I've seen kids who I didn't expect to get into the college get in. Right. Because of the essay. It's the make or break. It is. Yeah. So That's all I have. That's it. Um, you're going to tell them who you are. And you notice in that essay I read, she didn't go into all the details of who she was. Right. Like, my name is blah, blah, blah. Because that's, you figure yeah. that out. Your age is mm -hmm. kind of applying super early. I get a little confused about her being an intern at that level. And then I had to remind myself that she was still in high school. Right. So sometimes if, if, if I were her coach, I would have put in my age when I got that internship. 
Because I'm yeah. guessing 14 in an internship. Put Write that down. That That is fair. Mm-hmm. If, if your experience is out of the range of normal, mm-hmm. you might want to include that information. Yeah. And then um, she didn't tie it back to the college. Um, but it is right. probably the, one of the best essays I have read. Don't feel obligated to write about the saddest thing that happened to you, especially if it didn't create a turning point in your life. I'm not asking you to cry and torture yourself and feel embarrassed or ashamed. Right. Okay. Thank you. Till next time.